it happened? Why are you so shocked? Weren't you praying for me? You didn't have the same level of faith as me? Then why are you so shocked? You know why? Those people who are praying for you, some of them want the good things to happen to you according to their timetable. They want it to happen when they feel that this is when it should happen. She suffered enough. He suffered enough. And sometimes they feel that your wait wasn't long enough. They feel that your, the, 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 the period that you've been going through the desert was not long enough. Uh, and, and those are people to also beware of. And those people, to me, they're also leech. Because those people, uh, a leech takes the nutrients from a person. When you're taking the blood, they're taking the nutrients of a person. And those people, they don't want that goodness from you, for you, just plainly because they want it. But it has to be according to a timetable that they see fit. But we know that the only timetable that we care about, I mean, we care about our timetable too, but the only timetable that we should care about is God's timetable. So if God is saying, right now is your time, this person is like, oh really? No, I gotta see, they really promoted you to that? No, what was the job description? You're not, you're not really a manager now. You're not really a supervisor. What, what's the job description? What do they have you doing? Why? Because they're so shocked about it. Because they feel that there was a path that they had lined up. This is what she's going to go through. Then this is going to happen. And bam, that's how God's going to work. This is what's going to happen. Then he's going to feel like, oh man, I'm feeling it. And he's going to have to go to the TA and say, bet the TA. TA is going to say, here's some extra credit. Make sure it's not enough. Then you got to do something else. Go to office hours again. And then God delivers you. And because you didn't have to do all that. Because the, 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 the professor just saw, hey, you know, you've been trying real hard, so I'm going to reward your effort for them. That's not right. Because they weren't looking according to God's timetable. They were praying with you because it sounds good. Some people will pray with you because it sounds good, but they're not really there because they want to see the best for you. And those are people that you need to also be aware of. And those are people that I personally would consider leeches as well. So I want you to really be aware of those two types of people that we discussed earlier. And God... Dropped this verse in my spirit literally last night. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, really? That's awesome. And it's Proverbs 30. And it's 15 to 16. And to me, it's, it's just so perfect regarding everything that we're going to discuss throughout this entire month. And I trust that you're going to be really blessed by it. I'm going to be reading it from the New King James Version. You could read it along. Whatever version that you have. Proverbs 30, 15 to 16. Do you guys have it? Amen. Let's read it. It says, The leech has two doors. Give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire that never says enough. So God is saying, the leech has two daughters, give and give. What does that mean? That there's some people that are in your life, all they want is for you to give them. They just want you to contribute to their life, but they're not really contributing to yours. And that's what I was really trying to illustrate when I named those two types of people to be aware of, because they're not pouring into your life. They're not really helping you be better. It may seem that way, but that's why throughout the month we're going to look at things like deception because we want you to be able to look through all those uh, masks and really see what's behind it. So you have to really be aware of that. Uh, Proverbs 30, 15 and 16, it speaks of a generation that never has enough. And I feel that even sometimes us, we're, we're this microwave generation, we want everything to happen quickly. But also, we're never satisfied when God blesses us. God, you know, just helped you get out the class, um, you know, pass the class. And you're like, man, God, I passed the class, but you wanted a 3-8. Well, maybe if you studied a little more, but God helped you that you didn't fail and you didn't have to take it over. So you're looking for the 3 eight, but be happy that you, you got it. Because let's be honest, you probably went two classes all semester. So be happy that he didn't, you know, allow you to fail. So we're a generation that never has enough. And also a generation that prays on their neighbor. And, and I'm not just speaking about us, but society. I'll say pray on your neighbor. I, I posted a video on my Facebook page recently about uh, one of the, I think it's the CFO. He works with uh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett being the third or fourth richest person on the planet. And he works for Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett's company. He's a billionaire himself. Uh, Steve Monger, I believe his name is. And he was talking about just society and the economy, the disparity between the rich 
and you know the not so rich. And he's saying the problem is, let's be honest, these CEOs, you know, they want three hundred million dollar salaries, a hundred million dollar bonuses at the end of the year, but they're not the ones really doing the work. And they're willing to cut the pay of the other people. They're willing to, you know, dock the hours. They're really, you know, willing to fire them. Why? Because we become the society that all we want to see is how can I get on the come up? But you're not looking out for your brother as you come up. There used to be a saying that says, you know, I am my brother's keeper. And the, the point of that saying is as you climb the ladder, you reach back and you help your brother climb it as well. So if you're a CEO and you're making, let's say, a hundred, you know, million dollars a year, I'm not saying don't make your hundred million dollars a year, but that bonus, let's divvy that up and let's give it to some of the people that are starving, some of the people that can't feed their families, and they're working for your company. You know, I understand you're the CEO, so you feel you should have, you know, a certain amount of money, but let's make sure everyone who's in your company is benefiting. Um, what's his name? Mr. Ford, Henry Ford, the person who started the, the Ford company, the car company, he's one of the first, you know, CEOs who, he believed in paying people according to the price of inflation. Meaning as, as everything went up, the, the produce went up, and the, the dairy products were going up, the, the price of your clothing was going up. He wanted to pay his employees uh, an adequate amount of money that met that. Why? Because he wasn't trying to suck them dry just for his benefit. But he wanted to say, hey, as you guys make me better, let me also help you be better. And that's how we have to start thinking and as a society. We have to make sure that we're not rich as well. That as we get better, whatever, whatever, whether it be in your personal life, your career life, your acad academic life, your spiritual life, how can I also help the next person get better as well? And, and this verse is talking about a generation that just prays on their neighbor to gain more. But God doesn't want that. God is a God of love. He wants us to encourage our neighbor. He wants us to feed them and clothe them. So as we get better, Let's also help those who are um, nearest. Now, it's, um, the verse uh, speaks about, uh, let me go to it real quick. Yeah. The verse um, in, uh, in 15, it says three things that are never satisfied. It says the barren, the grave, the barren womb, and the earth. Why is the grave never satisfied? The grave is never satisfied because there's always more room for dead bodies. There's always more room for dead bodies. The, the grave, you all know that big uh, cemetery that basically lines up the entire Jackie Robinson. It starts in Queens and it goes all the way to Brooklyn, and that's the cemetery. And it's on both sides. It's a massive amount of land. People get buried there every day. And that's the big thing. You would think at one point there's not enough space. People get buried there every day because the grave is never satisfied. The barren womb. Barren womb means you, you, you can't have a child. The barren womb is never satisfied because it wants something to fill it up. It, it, it senses the emptiness and it's not happy with the emptiness, they want something to fill it up. Um, the dry earth, when you, they, it creates a child, the dry earth really is a, is a, it's an earth that, it, it's perched, it, it, it's parched, right, that's the perch. it's parched. And no matter how much water that you put on a dry earth, because it's so used to being dry, it just wants more. Imagine, you, you know when you're thirsty, and you know your throat is just like, it, it feels rough, it feels like sandpaper. You take that bottle of Poly Spring or Dasani, if you're like me, Fiji. You take that bottle of Fiji, and you guzzle that bad boy, and I'm telling you, you can grab another one right away. Why? Because it's so dry, you just want more. You want you want more nutrients. You just, you're craving so much more. And God is saying that our generation, the people, the society, is like these three things. You know, they, they feel like no matter how much you give them, they're never satisfied with it. And then it says four is never enough. The four includes those three things, but also includes the fire. Why? We all have seen fires. When a fire burns, the more that you put into it, the fire just gets larger. We see in California these large forest fires. I'm like, how is it eating up like 300 acres? How come it doesn't stop? Because the fire just wants more. It wants more. It wants more. And no matter how much you give it, it is not Satisfied. No matter how much you give it, it doesn't feel that it's adequate enough. It doesn't feel that it's reached a certain level. And God is saying, we're just like these four things. And all these four things, if you re really look at it, they're things of destruction. They're th the, the grave um, is something that is, represents death. The barren womb uh, really represents, uh, you know, lifelessness, which you could say death again. The, the dry earth is inadequacy. The fire represents destruction. And we become this 
disturb people. We become distract society because all we want is our benefit. But we're not looking to benefit the next person. And that's not who God wants us to be. So as we look out for those people, those who may try to befriend us, but they're really out there because you know they, they love them or are miserable, so they're going to pray for you and they're going to console you. My sister, I need you. That's why I have to be careful not telling everyone your business. You tell them, hey, you know, I'm having man trouble. I'm having you know problems paying my school. I'm having problems with my family. They're there. They're crying right beside you. But little do you know, they're like, oh, man, I'm not the only one. So they're praying with you, but they're, they're happy at the same time. You know, so beware of those people, but at the same time, make sure that you're not that person. Make sure you're not that person that when God blesses you with something, that you feel that it's not enough. And then you're not, at the moment, you may feel maybe you need to pay for school. I know school's like the easiest thing to kind of compare it to. You need $10,000 for school. God gave you five. And you're like, man, God, but you know, there's the other five. My brother, that's five that's thousand dollars you have to worry about. So I understand it's not enough when you really think about it from a practical point of view. But where's the gratefulness? And that's really what God is going, is, is really trying to point out right here. People are ingrates. Ingrates. They're, they're, they're not thankful. And we know that those type of people are just going to kick them to the side. They're going to get planted. He's going to step on them because they're not grateful. So let's be mindful and let's really open our eyes. And this month of May is really what we're going to look at and we're going to dig deeper into it. I hope that these few short words that that were spoken to you in the short time that we spent together, that it was something that you learned, that your eyes were opened up to things maybe that you realize that you do, and a mindset that you realize that you have, and that you need to change. And perhaps when we highlighted certain people that are in our lives, maybe you saw, hey, I think I may have some of those people around me. And this month, we're going to teach you how do you detach from those people? How do you remove yourself, and how do you move forward? Thank you, and God bless.